Good morning and welcome to St Cuthbert's Church, West Hampstead. I'm the Reverend Hugh Thomas, the Associate Vicar at this lovely church. Shortly we'll be starting our morning worship, but before we do that, just a reminder for those of you who watch on YouTube, please share this, like it, comment on it, and most importantly subscribe to this so you can see our other videos as soon as they come out and do press that notification bell. Good morning and welcome to St Cuthbert's for today's service on Sunday the 24th of May. Today we'll be keeping the service as a celebration of the ascension of our Lord which was actually on Thursday this week but of course we will remember this, um, this event today so our readings will be those for the Feast of the Ascension. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And some words at the start of our Ascension Day celebration service. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for 40 days we have been celebrating with joyful hearts the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, his bursting from the tomb, and his defeat of the power of sin and death. He appeared to his disciples many times and told them about the kingdom. Today, we recall how he left this earth and returned to his Father, ascending into heaven to take his throne over all dominions and powers, trusting in his reign over all creation and submitting to his kingly yet loving rule. Let us hear the story which we will hear tonight, this afternoon, this morning, um, of his parting. And so we gather today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, because we know, friends, that God so loved the world that he gave his only Son to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. And so as we gather together virtually this morning, wherever we may be, where we're sitting, we're standing, we may be walking around and listen to this on our phones, let us for a moment stop and be still, remembering the things that have gone wrong as well as right this last week and confess our sins to Almighty God, firmly resolved to keep his commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. And so we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all those who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so we hear the glorious words which we say during our Easter and Ascension season. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. 
receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we gather on this day celebrating the ascension of our Lord with our special collect so that we may pray that our risen and ascended Lord will lead us to eternal life. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we in heart and mind may also ascend and with him continually dwell, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we have our two readings this morning. The first reading is from the book of the Acts of the Apostle. Thank you, Reverend Hugh. So the reading today is from the book of Acts, and it's chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. So I'll read that now. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hit, hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you very much, Reverend Hugh. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. A reading from the 24th chapter of the gospel according to Luke, beginning at the 44th verse. This is the very last section of the gospel. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then he opened his mind, their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then Jesus led them out as far as Bethany and... Lifting up his hands, he blessed them. 
And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Those are two wonderful readings that we remember the stupendous, amazing event of the, the ascension of our Lord to heaven, which was the fulfillment of the scriptures and all that Jesus had said about himself. And you know, if you read them, the descriptions of the moment of ascension are, I suggest, a little confusing. The accounts actually, if you compare what Luke says and what is uh, in the account in the Acts of the Apostles, there, there are significant differences. There are things missed out and new things put in. And there, if you've looked at some of the amazing artwork uh, surrounding the Ascension of our Lord, just like the, the picture that I posted on the church Facebook pages last week, you will see that there are many different interpretations of what the ascension is or was. The event which undoubtedly happened is probably, not probably, is definitely impossible to have been described fully and accurately. Just like perhaps our own faith. When we cannot describe things, we use that imagery which differs from different people as the next best substitute. So if we go to the account in the Acts of the Apostles, it's recorded by Paul as being that the disciples were somewhat confused about what Jesus was saying in verse 6. They asked Jesus whether this was the time for the restoration of Israel. In other words, if you think about it, they were harking back to the idea and the previous understanding that Jesus the Messiah will be the great and mighty warrior, as many of the Jewish theologians had said, and would bring um, peace to Israel and rid them of these horrible Romans. It feels to me, at least, that those disciples were in a similar state of shock as had happened to them immediately after Jesus' crucifixion. You remember when Peter denied Jesus three times? And all the other disciples seemed to have like disappeared and wandered back elsewhere, a bit disheveled and not knowing what to do next, and pretty scared. It seems to me they were similarly confused and scared now. What would happen? Their, their Lord and Messiah has gone. And at these moments, I return to the fav my favourite story of Doubting Thomas. We had it in our Gospel reading the last couple of weeks. And in that account, Jesus does not rebuke Thomas when Thomas has previously said, I won't believe that this is the Messiah until I can put my hand uh, in his side. But Jesus lovingly invites Thomas, as you remember, to see for himself. And at that point, Thomas, doubting Thomas, exclaims, my Lord and my God. When Jesus ascended to heaven, Leaving the disciples confused and bewildered, Jesus had been prepared, preparing them by telling them, don't worry, the Holy Spirit will descend, as indeed the Holy Spirit did a week or so later, which we will be remembering at church next Sunday, which is the Feast of Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus will never leave his followers alone. And at these difficult times, perhaps we can reflect 
in this dreadful trauma of the COVID-19 pandemic that we are all, aren't we, pretty confused and bewildered. However, I hope and pray that we can at least gain some comfort and strength from the fact that Jesus never leaves us or forsakes us and is always with us, perhaps especially at times of crisis as we are living through at the present time. Through quiet prayer and reflection, we can reacquaint ourselves with our risen Lord. But there's one other important aspect of the story that I'd like to explore with you very briefly. The ascension was the end of the earthly ministry of Jesus. That's quite clear. Nothing would ever be the same again. However, Jesus also indicated very clearly that the disciples would be sent, sent in that way that's recorded at the 28th chapter, the very end of St. Ma- uh, Matthew's Gospel, that Jesus told his followers to make disciples of all nations. You remember that, that part? So, as the earthly ministry of Jesus ends, so the earthly ministry of his disciples and followers, and by extension, all of us through the millennia, starts. Being a follower of Jesus is not just worshipping and praying, but acting in ways to further the gospel message. That might be by words and or actions. In fact, anything that enables other people to engage with and understand better the truth about the gospel message of Jesus. This is not a light responsibility. And perhaps over the years, many people have regarded Christian ministry as being something the clergy did. Well, it is. But we are all a priesthood of all believers. And each of us, each and every one of us, can have and does have different roles, depending on our skills and our abilities and our opportunities. Absolutely everybody is included. No one is excluded from the opportunity of ministry. And so, as we develop new ways of relating to people in our society as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, we all have to think of new ways of doing church. Now, certainly in the short and medium term, we absolutely have to do that, which is why I'm speaking to you through the video link. But in the longer term also, Perhaps we need to think and work out how we might engage with worship in churches. How is that likely to change? What parts will remain the same? What parts will and should change? Now, I'm planning to be able to hopefully continue the YouTube channel. I'm not quite sure yet whether we'll broadcast the full service or parts of the service or perhaps some just the sermon. But we all need to think about how to engage with people because we get 60, 70, 80, 90 views of some of these services on YouTube. How can we engage with all of you out there in different ways? So as you think about that, please do let me know because this is engaging you and me and all the people of God. So as I said earlier, Please comment, like, and share. So the message from today's reading is that if we are confused by the ascension story of Jesus, that's okay, so were the first disciples. In that confusion, Jesus reassured them, as he reassures us today, that we will never be alone because we have the power of the Holy Spirit to guide and support us. As we are confused about our own situation, 
in the context of COVID-19, Jesus will not rebuke us for not understanding, but will lovingly embrace us as we are. And finally, what about this spreading of the gospel message? That's for everyone. And perhaps I'll just end with a wonderful description of how this gospel message of Jesus is spread today. Using the words from the 16th century from St. Teresa of Avila. This is what she said. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now on earth, but yours. And so, friends, we are the body of Christ. Amen. And so perhaps as we reflect on the majesty and the power and the loving kindness of Almighty God, we remind ourselves of our faith in the words of our Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again from the dead. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so, friends, we gather this morning with many issues that are maybe troubling us for people and situations that we pray for. We keep in our hearts all those who are suffering still as a result of COVID-19, those many people who are still dying day by day by day. For the health workers and care assistants and all the other essential workers who are working so hard at the moment to try and maintain 
our lives to try and maintain safety, security and health in our nation. And that also, friends, is a joint endeavour so that by God's grace we may realise that we are part of that solution. So on this day where we remember the glorious ascension of our Lord back to heaven, we pray. Let us join together this morning with those of our Saviour Jesus Christ and seek in the Father's blessing and the gifts of the Spirit. Jesus, great High Priest, living forever to intercede for us, pray for the Church, your broken body in this world. So Lord, we hold before you our Church, sometimes divided, sometimes perhaps often confused amongst itself. We pray for the Church leaders, Archbishop Justin and Bishop Sarah and Bishop Rob, that they will be given the strength and the fortitude to be able to gather together various parts of our church. They may work as one for the furtherance of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, King of righteousness, enthroned at the right hand of the majesty on high, Pray for the world and make it subject to your gentle rule. And so remember, Lord, all those who are set in authority over us. We pray for our Queen and her government who are struggling at this time, as they have been, to do what is right and best for all the people in our country. We pray, Lord, that they will be, they may know your guidance, that they may know your loving embrace, that they may proceed with the most difficult decisions at this time. Always seeking, Lord, the common good of all people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, Son of Man, join humanity into the life of God. Pray for our brothers and sisters in need, distress or sorrow. So we hold before you, Lord, at this time, those who are suffering in our own community. We remember, as we do continually, Rick and Sue. We remember David G and Gloria, all those self-isolating due to illnesses. We remember Alan Hitchin, isolated in his um, nursing home and many others known to a few of us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace and bring the whole created order to worship at your feet, for you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us as a pledge of what is to come and has given his spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. So may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And if you're able within your family, within your house, do embrace the people with you as a sign or the peace and the love of God.
Lord Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, who promised your disciples to be with them always, let this sacrament be for us a foretaste of your banquet in heaven, where you are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. Through Jesus Christ, the King of glory. Born of a woman, he came to the rescue of our, our, our human race. Dying for us, he trampled death and conquered sin. By the glory of his resurrection, he opened the way to life eternal and by his ascension gave us a sure hope that where he is, we may be also. Therefore, the universe resounds with Easter joy and with cries, choirs of angels, we sing forever your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Ho heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these thy gifts of bread and of wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen and Christ will come again. And so, Father, call into mind his death upon the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice, of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit, Lord, upon all your people, wherever they may be, whenever they may join in this act of worship and prayer. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of them, Lord, 
and gather into one in your kingdom all we who through the power of the Holy Spirit spiritually share this bread and this cup so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honour and glory be yours almighty Father for ever and ever Amen Being made one by the power of the Spirit let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us Our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. the body of Christ broken for us. blood of Christ shed for us. And so having been fed and refreshed on this special day where we have remembered the ascension of our Lord, the special prayer. God, our Father, you have raised our humanity in Christ and have fed us with the bread of heaven. Mercifully grant that, nurtured with such spiritual blessings, we may set our hearts in the heavenly places, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we end by the prayer we always say of thanksgiving at the end of our service. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and open the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. 
we whom the Spirit lights, give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so that we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I don't think I've got any particular additional notices for you all today other than do at the end of the service, if you're watching it uh, on Sunday morning, um, at 11.30 we'll be joined together for a cup of coffee virtually, or cup of tea even, um, on a Zoom meeting and I have circulated the Zoom meeting uh, details and password and click and whatever um, to all of you via email on Friday. Um, so that's be brilliant. We'd love to see you. We had our first call last week, so if you're able to, to link in, that'd be brilliant. It is really easy to do. Um, if you have a problem, please do let me know. And just to let you know, in church here, um, things are changing a little bit because our nursery school is restarting on Monday. Um, so we've had to do a reorganisation of our temporary food bank which for the moment is being stored within the body of the church, uh, in fact, behind where the camera is at the moment. So it'd be a wonderful opportunity to continue this, what I call this ministry of the church to all the people in this area by spreading love and generosity and food and support to all those in need. And I pray that we can continue to be of service to our community. And so we end today with the special blessing for the Feast of the Ascension. God the Father, who has given his Son the name above every name, strengthen you to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. Amen. God the Son, who is our great high priest and passed into the heavens, plead for you at the right hand of the Father. God the Holy Spirit, who pours out his abundant gifts upon the church, make you servants of Christ our King. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Waiting expectantly for the promised Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. <laughs>